So if you open your notes to page 181, we're going to go over how to create graphs of sine and cosine. Before we do that up here in the corner, I'm just going to sketch a quick little unit circle. And I'm just going to put these five key ordered pairs. So this ordered pair over here is 1, 0. This one is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. This one right here at 45 degrees or pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. The one up here is at 1 half, root 3 over 2. And then up here it's at 1, 0. And then these points repeat themselves based on your bow ties and your reference angles around the circle. So the picture up top shows sine and cosine, and I want to explain to you how that happened. When we graph sine and cosine on the x-axis right here, we're going to graph theta, the angle. And really, when we graph them, theta is going to be in uh, our radians. And then these points that we get are going to be based off the trig function we use. So if we're talking about sine, we're going to use the y parts of the ordered pairs. And if we're talking about cosine, we're going to use the x parts of the ordered pairs. So if you go down and look at your first graph, I'm going to color in five important dots. And if you think about going around the circle, so when you're at zero radians, sine is zero. So that's why we have this ordered pair at zero, zero. And then if we go to pi over two, pi over two, sine, oops, sorry, I wrote this ordered pair backwards. Sine is at one, because y is one. And then when you come back down to pi, which is over here, the ordered pair over here is negative 1, 0, so the y part of the ordered pair is 0. And you go down here to 3 pi over 2, the ordered pair is 0, negative 1, so I'm down at negative 1. And at 2 pi, which is back here again, sine's back at 0. You've gone around the whole circle, and you've made that wave. And if you went around the circle again, that wave's going to keep going around and around the circle. That's where this side came from. They went around the circle backwards. So if you go backwards, you go to negative 1 first, and then you go to 0, and then, oh, then you go up here to 1, and then you finish back at 0. So this is the sine wave, and it keeps going and going and going. So I'm going to go over here to this box, and I'm going to fill this stuff in. Domain. What are the things we plugged in to sine to create this graph to happen? Well, we are going from, in theory, 0 to 2 pi and keep going, but the uh, sine wave went backwards also. So I'm pretty much going from negative infinity to infinity. And this table is based off the parent function, not some transformed version. The range. The range is how high and low the graph goes. Well, the graph goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So my range is negative 1 to 1. I have minimum values that occur at 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And that minimum value is negative 1. And make a little note. This happens every 2 pi because this is the low point for sine, and every 2 pi you're going to get back to that low point. So it's really going to be 3 pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi n, where n is just some integer, the number of times you went forward or back or around the circle, comma, negative 1. Um, sorry, this was my minimum down here. My maximum value I'm going to write over here. My maximum values occur at pi over 2, and those repeat every 2 pi. So I'm going to write pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi n comma 1. My intercepts, my x-intercepts occur at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, 4 pi. They keep going. So I have intercepts that occur every pi. So right here I'm going to put uh, pi n. And n could be 0, so I get that first intercept, and then 0. My amplitude. Amplitude is, um, means how high and low the graph goes. Not the total distance, but you that this hill is 
one high or this value is one low, well, that means the amplitude is one. It goes up and down one. Period is how long it takes the graph to repeat itself. We talked about the other day how the period of sine and cosine are both 2 pi because it takes 2 pi all the way around the circle to get back where we started again. So now if we do the same thing for cosine, um, I'm going to draw another circle down here so you can see it. So here's my circle. When we start right here, cosine right here is x and it's at 1, so it's 0 up at 1. When I get up here to pi over 2, the ordered pair is 0, 1, so cosine's at 0. Right here, the ordered pair is negative 1, 0, so at pi, I'm down at negative 1. And right here, um, I'm at 0, negative 1, so cosine's back at 0. And then finally, when you get back to 2 pi again, you're back up at 1. This graph is also going to keep repeating itself over and over again. So if I go back to my table and try to uh, fill in the table again, the domain is still negative infinity to infinity because you're going to go around and around and around the circle. The range is still negative 1 to 1. My maximums occur at 0, and then they happen at pi. So my maximums occur at pi n comma, sorry, pi n comma 1. My minimums right here occur at pi plus or minus pi n, because I have to start at a pi and then move um, pi over to get them, comma, oh, sorry, uh, comma, negative 1. My intercepts are going to be at 2 pi, or pi over 2, plus or minus pi n, comma, 0. My amplitude is still 1, and my period is still 2 pi. And the last question down here says, what's the difference between sine and cosine? Well, if you look at these graphs, they look very, very, very similar. The only difference is, is that right here at 0, 0, sine's at 0, but cosine's already up at 1. But if we shift a length of pi over 2, then sine would be up at 1. So these graphs are physically pi over 2 apart. And the vocab word to describe that is called a phase shift. When we talk about waves, waves when we talk about a, a horizontal shift left and right, we're going to use the word phase shift. So sine and cosine are a pi over 2 phase shift apart. Go back to Edmodo and uh, the videos will explain to you how to graph on the next page.